I'm Clint, and welcome to my Art Fundamental series. In each episode, we'll be taking a look at a different art fundamental that I think every artist should know. Perspective is the topic of this particular episode of Swatches. Our fundamentals. These are the core skills and knowledge that every artist should know because the truths of these permeate through every kind of artist. Portraitist, muralist, concept artist, it remains all the same. That's why your art education should start with these because it doesn't matter where you want to go. Fact is, if you know this stuff, you're on good footing to go in any direction you want to go. So what are they? Shapes and forms, shading, perspective, basic anatomy and proportions, color theory, composition, values, and observation skills. Now, I'm not here to teach you all of these things. This isn't a how to draw series, but more of a what should you know series. So you're working on your art education. You're refining your skills right now, but you want to spend your time where it's most effective. So make sure you got this stuff down first, and then move on to the fancy stuff. Ah, perspective. We all have one, but I'm not talking about our world of views. I'm talking about artistic perspective, one that involves our eyeballs. Now, Merriam-Webster would define it like this. Although, between you and me, we'll just say it's the thing that makes things in the distance look little and the things that are close to us look bigger. And it's also the technique that we artists use in order to mimic that sense of depth in our images. However, it wasn't until about the 1400s that man actually figured out how to mimic that in artwork. But now that we have, it's your turn to learn it. So let's hop into Photoshop. I remember learning perspective as a kid from an old art book my mom had picked up somewhere and being kind of thrilled about what I was learning. Now I didn't have to guess what angle a building should be at when viewed from a certain location. And I could figure out exactly how big something in the distance should be relative to the things in the foreground. It's a great thing. I'm kind of envious of everybody that gets to learn this for the first time and just be able to add this to your tool belt. It is truly one of the art fundamentals that you have to know. However, the topic is big. There's a lot to learn in perspective. I want to whittle that down to just five things. If you can learn five things right now, you're on a good start. That is one, two, and three points perspective how to establish a perspectivized pattern, and how to determine the perspective and the horizon line in your reference images. Let's look at the first ones. One point perspective. I'm going to give you a quick rundown so that you know what to go look and learn later. The idea is that the horizon line is where everything meets. In any parallel lines, every angle lines up to some vanishing point on that horizon line. If you're within the atmosphere, if you're over the atmosphere or underground, then that changes a little bit. But if you're on the ground, it applies. One point perspective. You can see this in a lot of locations, like roads going into the distance, buildings all lined in a parallel line, looking up, looking down. Anything that is converging to one point is going to follow that one point perspective. Two point perspective. Same principle, but the idea is that you see more than one plane of the object. I'm seeing the side of this. Now, all of a sudden, you have two vanishing points, one for this side and one for that side. You can also be used, as well as one point perspective, to establish the size of things in the distance in a group, assuming that you have things on multiple sides of your main subject. Somebody a little quicker, a little sharper might notice now, wait a second, we can see two sides of this building. Wouldn't that be two-point perspective? In actuality, it would be. You would actually have another perspective going that way with its own vanishing point way out there somewhere. But sometimes, depending on your angle, the vanishing point would be so far out there that it's not really worth establishing. You could just eyeball it. Two-point perspective, great for drawing most buildings, houses, towers, 
anything can be used like this, even the human. Okay, three-point perspective. Same principles are applying. However, now we have up and down as being the third point. Looking down has its own vanishing point way down there. This has its vanishing point this way. This has its vanishing point that way. Same thing with the tower looking up. Each angle has its own vanishing point. Parallel angles use the same vanishing point. And oftentimes, that vanishing point is going to be off the image. Sometimes, like this, it will be in the middle of the image, where everything is lining up to that point, like you see in these one points. Even on this one point, though, its vanishing point is slightly off. Depending on your closeness and your angle to the object, that vanishing point may be well off the scene, but you still have to figure out where it is and keep it consistent with all the parallel angles. Now let's take a look and see how that applies to photos. One point. This is basically a one point for the scene. Let's ignore the castle in the background for the moment. This pool is lined up with this angle. You can see that centerpiece going here. This also use this angle. Because this side and this side are parallel. I know in the image it looks like they're making a pyramid shape, but in real life they're parallel. But that's the whole thing about perspective. In real life we know that those things stay at the same distance all the way. However, visually it looks like they get smaller as they go away. That's perspective. Now the trees also are aiming at that perspective point, that vanishing point. Same thing on this side. All this stuff is using that same vanishing point. Now, this also tells me that that is my eye line. And that's where the horizon would be. The horizon is always your eye line. That is, that is the height of my eyes from the ground. If I was standing over there, my eyes would be at that level right there, right here. If I was standing by these people, my eyes would be at this level right here. Top of my head would probably be here. So I can look at that and tell that guy's head is over that. So he's a pretty tall fellow. And I would probably be about that tall. Likewise, my eyes are a bit over her eyes. So I could tell that I would probably be just a little bit taller than she is. These are the things that you need to know because when you're working with reference images, and you need to establish the size of things, you need to make sure you understand what that is. Or if you're incorporating, say that you're incorporating uh, a tower, another tower into this image, you would want to make sure that, okay, my tower is right here, but what's the side of it? What's the angle of the side of it? Well, all you have to do is use the same vanishing point everything else is and run it up here. And then I could tell there that is the angle that the side of that tower is supposed to be at. That way you can work into your reference images or get more information out of them. That is a one point. Let's look at a two point. Because we see two angles of this, this has a vanishing point out here. This has a vanishing point down here somewhere. If I was standing right here in this scene, I would be about that tall because my head would be over the top of my eyes just a little bit. That would pretty much be me. My eye level would be right here, my top of my head would be there, and I'd be standing on that ground right there. I could figure out how big a person should be in that scene. Very cool. That's what perspective can do. It takes the guesswork out of things so you know exactly how big things should be or what angles they should be at. Now let's look at an example of three-point perspective in order to round up this lesson. We already looked at the tower in the last one, however there's a difference here. We have a lot more of an up view to it. So it's exactly the same thing as we looked at in this three-point. See the tower here? That's what's going on. Once you understand what's going on, this is very simple. And this is also a great thing to know in order to build your own images. Say that you want to make up your own tower and you want it to look realistic. This is how you do it. You start by just making a form. 
And what we talked about in the last episode, shapes and forms. This is a cube. You establish a cube, you run your perspective lines, you make another cube, you make another cube. And then you just start subdividing it and say, okay, well, I'll just need to run the perspective for this little handrail. And then I need to run the perspective for this little angle going back here. And then this angle going back here. And that's how you do it. It all goes by that same rules. Perspectivized pattern. You want to know exactly where the next thing in an order should be. And I'll tell you what, this happens quite a bit. I will turn this layer on. And let's say that our horizon line is right here. That would be our eye level. Okay. And we're looking at a series of telephone or electrical poles going off into the distance. That'll be the bottom of them. That'll be the top of them. And here's my first pole. Right here, I'll double line so we can see it better. That's my first pole. Now I'm gonna say my second pole is supposed to be right here. And in case you're wondering, I am using the line tool in Photoshop and I'm holding down the shift key in order for it to be absolutely straight. I'm not hand drawing them completely straight. In order to figure out exactly where this next one should be, you go like this. This is a little lesson here. You take the top to the bottom, top to the bottom, and that gives me a middle. All right, from that middle X, I'm gonna run a guideline to my vanishing point. Now I have all the information I need to figure out all the other ones going down the line. I take the top of this one through the middle of that one and I run it down to the bottom. And wherever this goes through the middle of this and touches this, that is the next one. And then of course I just continue the process. Top of this one through the middle of that one Till it touches the bottom and you keep going and that is all there is to it now you can create a pattern you know exactly that is supposed to be here that's there this is here until you get all the way down the line no more guesswork because i tell you what you will almost always be wrong you will either under guess how far it should be or you will over guess how far it should be so take the time run your guidelines Probably do you guidelines on a different layer. I did it all in one layer, but you know, this just demonstration purposes. But anyway, that's five things. One, two, three point perspective, perspectivized pattern, and how to establish and understand where your horizon line is and your vanishing points are in your reference images. Thank you for joining me. That is all for this episode, but this is just one of several in my Art Fundamentals series. So please subscribe so you can stay around, catch the rest of those, or look at the ones that are already out. And until I see you next time, keep drawing. Perspective. We all have one. And I'm not talking about your world view, I'm talking about your actual perspective. Now, William. Where are you, Mepster? <laughs>